second here. Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. Some of you are watching us here on live stream as this feed begins to, uh, to, to start up here. I am looking here at a Russian website. This is uh, fontanka.ru. Uh, you can look it up yourself. The article here was June the 29th. And uh, I just noticed one hour ago, now it's not on RT in English language as of yet, but on RT News, uh, in the Russian language, they have actually begun to expose out this story as well. And uh, I'm going to share it with you. I had my wife come in and look at this after I found the story myself. I am able to find these things in Russian as well. But uh, she has to look at this to give me the, uh, the sure translation of what's going on, read the article, and see exactly what we have in this. But uh, uh, what this is speaking about here in the article here, it is saying to us that uh, that uh, the Vladimir Putin is beginning to purge out his own Baltic naval fleet. Now, what happened originally, this actually happened uh, in April. We had one Russian submarine that collided with a Polish warship in the Baltic. Now, his uh, Putin's commander there tried to cover the incident up. And it, since then, now we see that uh, President Putin is starting to do a cleanup job like that in the days of Stalin going through there. And he has dismissed 50 of his high command officers, many of them admirals, uh, because of not being willing to confront the enemy. Uh, that lets us know that there is some fear among Russian commanders not to get into a war with, uh, the, the, with NATO forces there. All right, now, to give you a little idea of what it says here, a number of officers of the fleet of persons, all right, as the uh, Fontanaka, more than 50 high-ranking officers of the Navy staff commander squadrons, all right, that's right here in this paragraph here. You can see in English 50 on your screen there, see? That right there is saying that it was 50 high-ranking officers in the Russian language there, all right, of the Navy staff commanders uh, of squadrons, teams, and units uh, to the Admiral in copper and gavash key uniform. All right, going down to this next paragraph here, right here it says that the transfer from military to official lease uh, the Baltic Fleet Command was accused of failing to repel a potential enemy. You know, this kind of reminds me of what happened with President uh, Obama in the case of where they were wanting to attack Russia, and, the, and it was leaked that he fired uh, or court-martialed and imprisoned his top of officer who had not released the military nuclear launch codes to do an attack on Moscow. All right, and so pot can't call kettle black in a case like this here. The, the fact of the matter is, it's a serious situation and Putin is not, as I read in one article the other day, he said he's not going to have a repeat of Ukraine and Russia where there's defectors or people that will side with a coup in his country. So he's cleaning house is exactly what he's doing. It goes on to say that as well as the lie of the higher command uh, under Peter the I and, and Comrade Stalin, such accusations ended uh, capital punishment in the 21st century. Humane Ministry of Defense informs about uh, the removal from military posts of the dismissal from the military service. In their case, in other words, instead of being uh, court-martialed -marshaled and shot for their, their actions, they're just being dismissed from the military. Putin is getting ready and he realizes that NATO is on his doorstep and NATO has no regard for life whatsoever. They consider to be humanitarian, but I guess in this case they're really not. Uh, especially when we see what has happened in Ukraine, and that's what I want to share with you now, all right? Let's take a look here. We're going to go to Google Maps, the satellite view, the yellow star there on your screen, that's me there in the Czech Republic. Just a little hop, skip, and a jump over Slovakia there, and guess where you are? You happen to be in Ukraine. My father-in-law was technically born in Ukraine. It was part of Slovakia as well. His parents were Slovak citizens, but that little region has always gone back and forth in battle. He is a Slovak citizen, but 
different times it was under Ukrainian uh, authority or uh, control there. Now, let's take a look at Ukraine here. I want to share with you something that I saw just the other night zooming in. East Ukraine. Ukraine is a huge state, all right? But in eastern Ukraine here, we have Donsk region right here. Donsk and Luhansk, these are the two regions here that are under uh, Russian control, and it's used as a Russian language only. All the way down here to Maripol, all of this here is being fought for uh, by the East uh, Ukrainian people who are all Russians by birth, most of them, because this was part of their area. You have to understand, Poroshenko really, in my opinion, is not the real president of Ukraine. I mean, you have to understand, the United States always claims to back democratic societies. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, Ukraine has always had, okay, it was democracy, maybe corrupt, I ain't going to say that it's not corrupt, but they had a pro uh, Russian president, and he would not go along with becoming an EU member. He started to, but when he backed out, well, what do you know? A coup comes in, and they overthrow him and put Petro Poroshenko, who's called the candy man uh, in uh, Ukraine because he owns the candy factories there and makes his millions off of candy. Uh, well, who knows? Maybe it's like others. He just imports weapons. Uh, but anyway, I want to show you something here. As we zoom in on Donsk, the region of Donsk right here. All right, as we get a little closer, you can see the airport right there at the top of your screen. I'm going to bring you a little bit closer to here. This was a brand new international airport built in Ukraine for people to come in and out. It was a great place. And you have to understand, even though many of these people are Russian citizens here, they're still proud of their country. They don't necessarily want to become Russian themselves but the thing is is because of their ethnic makeup they are Russian by you know by by extension the fact that their families have always been Russians uh, throughout the regions there is so much anti-semitism towards them because they are Russian and they are constantly killed they're constantly wiped out they're they're just murdered you know Russia lost 20 million people during the Second World War as Putin says, we haven't forgotten it, okay? And I, I have family from all different parts of the world, including the Russian Federation. I have family. I don't know who they are. They're extended. They're Jewish people that are living in the, in the Russian Federation to this day. I have a lot of family that lives in Israel as well since the uh, Second World War, all right? Now, but I wanted to show you something here. This is on right here uh, as we zoom into the airport here using Google Satellite. I want you to see something. And on those of you that will be watching on Israeli News Live on uh, YouTube, you'll be able to see this as well. This was the nice airport there. The brand new airport is only a couple of years old when the war began. And if you can see on that screen right now, guys, this is since the war in 2014 that the satellite images were taken. It is totally devastated. Uh, bombs. The buildings are all bombed out as you move over here. We have one, two, three, four, five places where, uh, six places that is, where the planes would come in and park and unload their passengers at the international airport. Totally bombed out, completely. First thing that uh, Petro Poroshenko wanted to do is to make sure that that international airport, one, would not be used by Russia, which, you know, the funny thing is, if they meant to not use it for Russia, they didn't do too good of a job on the runway. All right, runway's got a few broken places in it, but the runway can still be used. Okay? But you can see even all the bomb holes and stuff in the ground there. Unbelievable. The attacks that have gone on. Now, but this is something I wanted to show you as well. All right, that's just the airport. All right, that's the airport. Now I want to take you to the neighborhoods civilian neighborhoods where civilians live okay now you can see some houses here on your house they're still okay but as you begin to look look at the houses that have been bombed out it is unreal let me let me back out here here's an, here's another neighborhood it's, this one here is actually co close to the airport wait a minute you can't even see that one. that one's so bombed out you can't see nothing Hang on one second, guys. I began to look at this, 
and just see the devastation that these people have gone through. And some neighborhoods appear not to be uh, touched, but I think it's right here. Here we go. Here we go. You get into these neighborhoods here. Look at this. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six houses there still standing. Everything around it is bombed out. Everything. These are just neighborhoods, like in America. If you were in a neighborhood in America, you got a little side street and stuff where you lived at. And everything. I'll zoom closer so you can see it. All their homes are gone. You know? Totally gone. Totally bombed out. This side here especially. Go down here on the bottom here. Look at this one here. They're totally gone. Okay, you get a few that are still standing, but all the roofs and stuff are just totally missing on these houses here. You don't have to be a satellite expert to see this either, guys. You do not have to be. Now, since the picture's been taken, it looks like in some cases the rubble has been cleaned up. Um, but... Uh, again, another neighborhood. Uh, you can see the roofs busted open and stuff. I, I, I just, I was appalled to look at this, all right, just to see. And uh, what we're dealing here with, though, here with Russia, is Russia is not playing around. Uh, they are, Putin is dismissing military generals because they would not confront the enemy when the enemy was there. Uh, we definitely don't see that with the Russian fighter jets there and the bombers, how they swooped over in the Baltic Sea, uh, uh, United States uh, warships there. I guess Putin is wanting to make sure that his commanders are willing to carry out what he says to do. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.